I'm going to look at a technique for solving this type of integral when it's in this format. And what you've basically got is a derivative times some function to a power. So derivative times a, a function. And if you have that situation, you can just do add one to the power over the power, same as you can for just a polynomial. But whatever's being raised to the power of n, it has to be the derivative of that function for this to work. So we sometimes try and manipulate it so we get it, but that's what we're going to do. Now, sometimes you'll see questions this way, where they sort of give you big hints. And they say, oh, go and find this derivative. Go and differentiate the square root of 1 minus x cubed. Okay, let's do that. Well, uh, well, 1 minus x cubed to the power of a half is essentially what we're saying. Got to use the chain rule, anarchy. Bring down the power, half. Lower the power, minus a half. Diff the inside, minus 3x squared. And taking that out of index form, we have our answer. Minus 3x squared on 2 root 1 minus x cubed. So that's the first part of the question. And then they usually follow it up with this sort of question. Hence, go and find this integral. And you'll usually find that what they're asking you to find is, if not the same, some multiple of what we just did. And you'll see that our answer was minus 3x squared on 2 root 1 minus x squared. They're asking us to find x squared on root 1 minus x cubed. So what we attempt to do is create our answer. Because if we can create our answer, then we can go backwards. And we know where we came from because that's what we differentiated. What we created before was minus 3x squared. So let's put minus 3x squared on top. I can't just change the question, so I need to balance it out. So in order to get x squared, I would have to multiply the whole thing by minus 2 thirds. But I know the answer to this integral. That's root 1 minus x cubed. Because in part A, we said if we differentiate root 1 minus x cubed, we get minus 3x squared on 2 root 1 minus x cubed. Therefore, logically, if we integrate that, we must go back to root 1 minus x cubed. So sometimes they'll do that in the question for you. They'll give you a massive hint. But if they don't, all we've got to do is we've got to, all right, we want to set up a situation where we have a derivative times function. Because have a look at this integral. On the top of the fraction is x squared. The square root of 1 minus x cubed, well, the derivative of that is minus 3x squared. So that's what we tried to create on the top. They give me this one then. x times the square root of 2 plus x squared. Okay, I'm going to rewrite it. So you have a look at what's in the grouping symbol. What's being raised to a power? In this case, it's 2 plus x squared. As to the power of a half. And you ask yourself the question, well, what's the derivative of 2 plus x squared? Well, the derivative is 2x. So that is what I would like it to be multiplied by. I've got x. How do I make it 2x? I'll multiply by 2. Can't just change the question. It will also multiply by half out the front. But now it's in that form of derivative times some function to a power. So I can add one to the power over the power. Remember, this is actually a power of a half. Add one to the power, 3 on 2. Divide by the power, well, what we do is we turn the fraction upside down, 2 thirds. Half times 2 thirds cancels and, well, mere mortals would leave it as 2 plus x squared to the power of 3 on 2, but as super mathematicians, 3 on 2 is 1 and a half, 2 plus x squared to the power of 1 times 2 plus x squared to the power of a half, which is, of course, the square root of 2 plus x squared. Of course, another way we do it is via a method called substitution. And we'll look at this in far more detail next year. Uh, but the idea is, oh, look, this looks really difficult. So I'm going to do a substitution. And so what's causing me the problem? Oh, it's this thing under the square root sign. I don't like it. So I'll change it to just one pronumeral. So we'll let u be 2 plus x squared. But then what I do is I differentiate u. I get 2... Uh, 2x. But notice I've played around with it. I'm treating du dx like it's a fraction. And so I'm going to multiply by dx. And I now get an expression where I say du is 2x dx. And what I now do is I go substitute back in. A complete substitution. I want to get rid of every reference of x there. How can I do it? Well, 2 plus x squared, that was u. Got that. Uh, x dx. 
well hang on du is 2x dx so I've got half of du I can now get rid of every mention of x in that integral and that is a much easier integral to do it's just u to the power of a half add one to the power over the power the half of two thirds u three on two bang we get the same answer because if you go back to the second last line here that essentially is the same thing it's just that I've got u instead of 2 plus x squared but u is 2 plus x squared so I can back, substitute back in the only thing you've got to be careful with don't stop at u remember u is something you introduced you've got to put back in the x's try another one this is a definite integral okay uh, x squared well What's causing me the problem? The problem is this power of 3 on the bottom. What's the derivative of x cubed minus 2? What's well, 3x squared? So that is what I would like on the top. So let's make it 3x squared. Can't change the question. So balance it out, multiply by a third. But now I have derivative times a function. We've got x cubed minus 2 to the power of negative 3. Derivative times the function to some power. I can now just add 1 to the power over the power. Add 1, I get negative 2 over the power. Oh, but I've also got a third there. So 3 times negative 2, I get negative a 6 out the front. Substitute in. And again, you'll notice I've taken it out of index 4. And we get minus 1 eighth. If I was to do this one via the substitution method, what's causing me the problem? x cubed minus 2 is causing me the problem. Eh, okay, let's make it u. But that means the u is 3x squared dx. You'll notice I did that all in one line, and that's perfectly fine when you're doing this. See, the right-hand side is just my working out to help me. Because uh, remember, I would have gone du dx and then multiply by the dx, but eh, I've just done it all in one hit. So du is 3x squared dx. How do I get this back in? Oh, but hang on a sec. For a definite one, there's something else I have to do. So remember, 0 and 1 are x values. Now, this is a complete substitution. We're trying to eliminate every mention of x. That includes the limits. I've got to work out what u would be. So when x equals 0, I've got a formula there. u is x cubed minus 2. So when x is 0, u is negative 2. When x is 1, u is negative 1. I can now do my substitution. x cubed minus 2, that was u. Um, on the top of the fraction, I've got x squared dx. Well, du is 3x squared dx. So I have a third of du. And I'll put my limits back in. So negative 2 and negative 1. Add 1 to the power over the power. Substitute in. We have our answer. Now, when it's a definite integral, there's no need for me to go back to the x's. So remember, we've changed the limits as well. Because we're coming up with a definite answer, that's fine. I'll use the u instead of the x. It'll still get me the, the same answer. Okay. 5i. 